Well, good morning, Sunday School class. Obviously, I'm not Brother Rich, but I wish you all a good morning. If you don't know me, I'm Alexander Hyatt. I don't know too many people here that don't know me, but still. Um, it's good to be here, and I'm thankful that Pastor has given me this opportunity to teach Sunday School. Um, though I'm very nervous, of course, because I don't usually teach. I'm more preaching. So bear with me this morning, and Lord willing, you'll get a blessing out of it, as I hope, as much as it has been for me. Um, if you're watching online, I hope you all enjoy this service. We'll turn in our Bibles to Ephesians 6, Ephesians chapter 6. To this morning, I'd like to start my study with you all on the armor of God. And this first lesson, though, is not going to be like many others that deal with this. It's going to seem a little strange because a lot of times we just bum rush right into the armor of God, go through a list of the different items. But there is a certain piece of armor that really should be taught first before any of the others. But we'll get to that in a moment. So in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for this morning, and I thank you for all those that are listening this morning, Lord God, and to your word and being faithful, Lord. I pray that you'll just give them something special about this this morning and challenge them, Lord, to study your word and find out more about it, and not just look at it with an overview, Lord. In just precious and holy name I pray, amen. All right, now if you would turn in your Bible to John chapter 3. I'm going to focus on that mostly this morning. So the first piece of armor that I'd like to discuss is something that anyone that's in the military or has been in the military knows about it, but probably doesn't really think about it. And that is the Under Armour, the attire in which you wear underneath your armor. It signifies what branch you're in, who you affiliate with, and what you're about. It's not, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's that important, but it's the most important piece of armor that you'll ever wear. And it's significant. And whether you're lost or saved, you will have this type of armor. If you're lost, you're going to signify with the world. And if you're saved, you're going to signify with God, or at least that's the goal. But not everyone likes to keep this armor out and about. So how do you get armor? Well, armor in itself is a defense, and, and it's against different variables that are trying to attack you. Armor does not negate all damage. Armor helps negate most of the damage. So in your walk with God, you're going to get hit, and it's going to hurt, but it should keep it from being fatal. You can't wear other people's armor and expect it to do the same for you as your own. And everyone has issued their own armor. And it's made and fashioned for them. And we'll get into more detail as the lessons progress. But that's just to kind of whet your appetite for the armor of God. And since we're not teaching kids, I figure we can get into more detail and more depth in it. So Lord willing, we'll get that far. <laughs> so first, how do we get this armor? Um, it's inherited from birth. In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In America, when you're born in America, you, you're enlisted indirectly for the military as soon as you turn 18. But that's because you're born here or you are engrafted in here. You can't be an American soldier without being a citizen. That's why many people of other countries 
will try to join our military because that's a way of getting citizenship to be able to serve our country. But you can wear other people's armor. So if someone from Vietnamese picks up an American uniform, puts it on, does that make him an American soldier? No. So salvation can be pretended, can it not? I'm trying to ask it as questions instead of just blatant point answers because that's what I would do more in preaching. So I'm trying to get everyone to think. It's okay if you have questions or anything. And I'm trying to make sure I focus it in. But the reality is, is if someone was to come up to you and proof your uniform, would you be able to prove it, that it's actually yours? So in the military, they check to see if your uniform's clean and neat and tidy. So if someone came up to you, like if I went up to Brother Jeff and I said, hey, Brother Jeff, would you be able to give me your testimony? And if that all of a sudden scares you, there might be a problem. Not saying there is, but there might be a problem. So, but the world doesn't have any issue with that. <laughs> you can ask them, you know, what they're about. They're about the things of the world, things of the devil. You know, they don't think of it that way because they just see it as normal life because they were born into it. Now that you've been born again, what is the responsibilities of those who are saved? And now you can try to go through life without ever putting on your Under Armour and try to hide it. You can try to protect it, say that you're covering it up because you're afraid of what may come down, but that's not going to help you much. So, let's see. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, In verse 50, it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corrupt inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we should all be changed. So really, the first lesson, it it just seems so basic, but it's so profound. It's, if you're not saved, you can't wear God's armor properly. If you are saved, then you can, but are you going to? And are you going to put it off and act like the world just like you were when you're unsaved? You see, this armor that you're going to put on, without that under armor, it can hurt you. So, like, if you go and you study the Roman military and all of the different pieces of armor, you're going to find out a very key thing is that Under Armour is way more important than the different pieces because without it, you're hurting yourself trying to fight a battle because you're like, okay, I got my shield of faith, but without that piece of cloth to kind of buffer any of the attacks, you're going to take a lot more damage on your body. Um, The different parts of the breastplate, they interlock, but they can chafe on your skin and cause serious damage to you. And that's that's just using it. That's not even in battle. Excuse me. And if you go back to verse 34 in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So to be able to actually wear this armor, I want everyone to understand that it's not just, okay, I got saved, 
The blood of Jesus Christ is upon me. I have the uniform. I can wear it anytime I want. But how do you wear it? You put it on. It's something that shows forth. In a Roman legion, there's colors to each one of their units. Most defining was red, but there was other colors. But it signified who they affiliated with and with whom that they fought for. Now, would it make them any less of a Roman soldier if they didn't wear it? No, but it would impede them in battle, and it would confuse people on whether which side they were on, and they could get attacked by their own allies, which wouldn't be good. And the Roman Empire was very well known for having a very well-knit, well-designed military that worked very well together. And I believe the reason why Paul mentions this in Ephesians about the whole armor and is more geared towards the Roman Empire was just because they had a good military. And as Christians, we should be uniform and we should talk and walk together in Christ, not, not fellowshipping with the world at all times. Yes, we're going to be in the world, but it's not to be of the world, but to be, to be there for them so they can become a citizen of the kingdom of God. So, I'm not sure if it's getting across as well as I was hoping, but it's a symbol. It's something that protects you, and it also protects you from the elements. So, when a soldier is out and about, he doesn't always wear all of his armor, but he almost always wears his underarmor so that if it's raining or sleeting outside or cold, hot, summer, there's different you know, layers, but it protects them from the elements. And there's going to be spiritual elements in your life that may not be something that's from a devil. It may not be something that's from you know, God directly, but it could be just waves of life crashing against you. And yeah, your armor regular armor on top might be able to help protect you, but what's really protecting your soul and your spirit from the cold and the wind is your under armor and your faith in Christ and that blood that stains it the color in which it is. Um, now, as I said, you can play the Christian Anyone can. Someone in this room might be playing Christian, saying that they have this such and such testimony, and they're a very good actor. Very good. And some of us are. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I, I, I accepted Christ. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. <laughs> they're just saying what they've been told for ages. You'll know by the blood if they are. You'll know by the, the signs that God gives in his word. And, but we'll never know if we don't open up his book. You know, God says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So how can you tell? Well, are they saying that they need works plus salvation? Are they saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I got saved, but, um, yeah, I, I also go to church, I got baptized, you know, but what does that matter about salvation? Is that your salvation testimony? Now, I'm not trying to get anyone to question their salvation, but it should be a thought on your mind, like, okay, if for very grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, then how can baptism and doing good or going to church symbolize that? Because your Under Armour is your symbol. How does that symbolize salvation for you? And are you just trying to confuse the person talking so that you feel good about yourself and say, oh, yeah, I'm a part of this group. I love you guys. You know, you can have social action with, you know, the enemy and everyone will think you're a part of it. You have spies in every military. You have people who infiltrate all the time. Now, some people might be here and they don't even, or listening online, and they might be like, what are you talking about? Of course I am. But if someone asked you, 
directly to give your testimony, could you give it? So for like me, I got saved when I was about seven years old, and I know it. Now, the reasons I ended up getting convicted were kind of <laughs> interesting, because we were playing outside, and we were playing baseball with a plastic yellow bat, and my little brother, Zachary, if you may know, is kind of Riley, and uh, he wouldn't move so I could swing the bat. Now, I'm usually pretty passive, but if I really want to get something done, I just do it. And I did. And he got hit. And part of me didn't care. <laughs> Until my mom was like, uh-uh, you go to your room. And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. And then she brought me to my room, prepared discipline, and then she asked me the question, are you even saved? Like before that, if you'd asked me to say it, I'd be like, yeah, of course I'm saved. Yeah, I've been in church since I was three. Of course I'm saved. I have to be saved, right? I've been a part of the greatest church in the world that talks about this church. Of course I had to be saved. But God said, no, you're not. You're, you're taking a piece of your parents' cloth and throwing it about you saying you're saved, but it's not your own. It was not issued to you. You're just playing the part because your parents are saved. You're just playing the part because your pastor is a good man of God and you follow the teachings of everything else except for the most key point. You know, you act like you're saved when you're at church because then everyone thinks you are and then when you're out and about you can hit people with a bat and not care. Um, <laughs> But then God convicted my heart and was like, hey, you need to get saved. And I was like, but how? Well, it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you just simply believe. And as a child, that was pretty simple to understand. It's like, okay, I just had to believe him to save me? Sure. So I bowed my head and closed my eyes, and I asked Christ to come into my heart and save me. Now, when we get to the helmet of salvation, we'll go in more detail on assurance of salvation, but that's when I got mine issued. Now, as a baby Christian, you're not going to be expected to throw on your breastplate of righteousness and your shield of faith and your helmet of salvation and you know, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. I'm sorry, a baby doesn't usually do that. And that's where the parents and those that have showed them how to get saved, their job is to protect them. So when you're in, in drafted in the military, you're told, all right, you got to do this, but you have to wait until you're a certain age. So, like... If Uncle Sam wanted me to go on the battlefield, they would send me a letter and say, all right, you're getting drafted in. But they couldn't do that until I'd hit 18. Now, I could do early and volunteer when I was 16, but that's as early as you can go, <laughs> legally. <clears throat> so that's the same with the Christian walk. There's going to be baby Christians that we're going to have here at church that aren't going to be able to defend themselves. They don't have all the knowledge and the tools to protect themselves. And so our responsibility as those that have been saved for a longer period of time and have studied God's word on our own is to help protect them and defend them. And as they get older, help them put on their armor. A lot of times the soldiers couldn't put on their armor by themselves. They had to have someone else help them strap them in because it's a, a very work intensive thing to put on some of that armor. And you have to do it in a certain order. But how can you do all that if you're just worried about yourself? And that's where the military aspect comes in. And, okay, you have the banner, you're symbolizing it. But if you're not actually for it, then what are you doing? Like, I'm for people being at church just to be at church. I'm for people doing that because you won't get right 
unless you're in somewhere where that is right. But don't let it stay there. Start studying your Bible. Don't, don't just see Brother Rich's class as something that you get to sit through, maybe get a little bit of knowledge, say you went to church, ching I got it. There's more to that. You have a responsibility as a citizen of the kingdom of God to study, to show yourself approved, which you can find in Timothy. And my mouth won't stay on parts. Um, so think of different ways that you can help those around you and also help yourself begin to start accumulating that armor. You know, Brother Rich's class on the end times is great, and it's scary, but hopefully it will motivate you to understand that you don't have time to play soldier. There is a spiritual warfare, and it's around you at all times. You may think that you're having an issue with a fellow Christian because you have an issue with that person. The reality is, is there's other principalities around here that are going to attack your family, they're going to attack you, and they're going to make it seem like it's somebody else's fault. But really, the devil just wants to ruin your life because he sees your symbol. He doesn't want you to be a dedicated soldier. Now, on the other hand, you'll find plenty of his soldiers very dedicated and very to the cause. I mean, you know, I've seen many a Jehovah's Witness at a door knocking and spreading what they think is the true gospel. But you'll have a hard time finding a Baptist doing it. And we know the truth from God's word 100%, and we can prove it. But yet, their emblem, even though it's the wrong emblem, they're more than proud enough to show it forth every single day. I mean, I almost have to admire their dedication because a lot of times they're better than I am. And I've tried to consider myself as a halfway decent Christian, but compared to the, the military force of our enemies, we're nothing. If they give you up a question real quick on how you believe, are you going to stutter on like, how to respond to them? Do you have the answers? Well, yeah, it's right here. It's right here. But you don't look at it. And I'm not speaking to you directly. I'm speaking to myself. We don't look at it enough to really defend against it. Even with just our under armor on, it still can protect you from many different things. And depending on how you move, you may be able to get out of a tight situation because it's still a pretty thick piece of garment that's meant to help protect against metal chafing. So it still can take a blow. But what happens if you're not even trying? You'll find that the enemy also will move in a unit. They're very bold in what they do, and they move very organized. The church is supposed to be a very organized assembly of God, of baptized believers. We should be able to work together without any problems. So in this class, I, I want first to dedicate some time for you to really think about what are the different things in your life that might hinder you from being able to work with so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so? and what can you mend on your armor to help you? Because before you can even put on the helmet of salvation and the shield of faith and take your sword of truth, you have to prove that armor. As Pastor mentioned when he was talking about Goliath, you know, King Saul tried to help David by giving him his armor. That wasn't a bad thought. But David couldn't wear his armor because he didn't prove it. it means he didn't have it, like, fitted for himself. He wasn't used to wearing it. But he was used to wearing his under armor. And he, he took what he knew and was able to slay a Goliath a Goliath, a giant, nine foot tall and 15 pound spear and all that amazing like military force with a single stone because he believed in the God that saved him. And he had no physical armor. So 
to say that you can't do anything even as a baby is not true. You still can defend yourself, but they still need help to find out where that power is. Because the power of God is very strong, and it shouldn't be underestimated. In fact, you have the best armor ever created and that will ever be. <laughs> the, the enemy's armor may seem strong and may seem powerful, and they may seem like they're going to overcome everyone. In fact, that's what the whole end times is about. They're going to feel like they're going to win. In fact, they're going to go to the battle of Armageddon and think they can win against God. And then they're going to find out real quick that their armor is like paper thin. Because with just a word of God, they're all going to be gone. But how many of your friends and your family are you going to let be in that battle instead of being on the other side? So, I challenge you today that throughout your walk this week that take some time and write down your testimony. Because if you can't, then come to me, come to Pastor, come to Brother Rich, come to our ushers, and we'll gladly open up the Bible and show you how you can get your Under Armour and get that settled. Because that's the most important thing. I can rant and rave all about the different pieces of armor and how they can be applied, but if you try to put it on without this Under Armour, there's no point. <laughs> because you're going to have a false security. Because when the battles come and the winds rage, if you're just wearing the armor on top and you don't have the proper undergarment to protect you from the armor itself, you're going to get beat up just as bad, if not worse. So don't play Christian. Become a true baptized believer of Jesus Christ. And I'm mostly saying it for those online because I do mo know most of your testimony here. But if it's just a facade and it's just a story that you tell, please just get saved. I don't want to get up to heaven one day and see a, you know, my dad and he'd be like, I thought you were saved. And he'd be like, no, I just told the story. That would hurt me more than for you to get saved now. In fact, I'll be enjoyed because it'll be awesome. You're like, yes, praise the Lord, we have another recruit. We have someone else that can help in this, in this walk, in this fight that we're going to be battling every single day. So don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. We're not going to judge you in that way. And if you do judge people that way, you should be ashamed of yourself because then you're basically just trying to step on fellow soldiers and trying to beat up and bully fellow comrades in arms and you're not trying to fight the good fight. You're fighting against God and himself, even though you're supposedly a part of it. So let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for this morning. I thank you for the time you have allotted, Lord. And I pray that I have taught this lesson the way you wanted me to, Lord. And hopefully I didn't get too confusing, Lord God. Um, and I pray, Lord God, if there's anyone who's not saved today, that they'll get that settled today and not keep waiting and not try to keep faking Christianity, Lord, for your coming could be any time. I thank you for all the blessings you've given us, Lord God, and I thank you for our church. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen.